Hey guys, thanks for sticking around with me through all this. Uh, this will be the fourth video in the uh, FPGA to LCD series. Um, we'll go ahead and do this video, and then I'll make a video about the actual code that you can get from GitHub down below. Um, and then I'll also make a video, I've already made a video, but need to edit it, um, for the data sheet for the LCD and for the Mojo V3. Um, so stick with us, or if you if you think you already got this and want to move on to the next one, uh, move on to that. Unless I haven't uploaded it yet, I'm trying to get this stuff up uploaded as fast as possible. Um, but you might subscribe down below um, in order to get an alert or hit the bell on that one. Um, so we'll go ahead and move right into video four. So we've got uh, all the basic same codes that we had before, or the basic same code that we had before. We're just adding little bits here and there and changing it up a little. So we have the input, which is the clock. We have the output, which is the LEDs. Same setup as before. Uh, we have registers 27 down to zero for the count. That stayed the same. We have registers seven down to zero for the code. That stays the same. And we have one new register. We're gonna call that init for initiate. I often just abbreviate that. Um, so we're gonna do the same thing. We've got an always block because we have now three different sets of registers that we're gonna to need to change on an actual clock. Um, so always at the positive edge of the clock, uh, we're going to start this and we're going to continue to count up. So we're going to continue that count. The count is the same. We're still doing the, the 0 to 27. I know previously it was uh, 26, but we're doing 0 to 27. We're just going to count up. Um, once we get to the top, we're going to turn it to 0 and we're going to count up again. Um, same thing as we were doing before. So then we're going we're gonna to throw an if statement outside of this whole thing, um, which is yeah, I, I was saying earlier, case is just a, a bunch of ifs. Um, this is this is the more detailed, less abstract uh, case. If init begin, right? So if an init or initiate is one, then we're going to go ahead and start. If it's not one, so you see if and else begin. If it's not one, then we're going to call it just zero. We're going to call code zero. Um, and there's actually going to be an LED tie-in below that, which we don't see. So we're basically doing the exact same thing. It's just now we're we are going to say, do we want to put this code out or not? So now it's not technically repeating. So if if init if initiate is one, which could be our button, right? So I could tie that to my button and say, if I hold this button down, it'll it'll throw the code. If I pull the button up, it won't. Um, which is going to be important. We're, we're needing to kind of break this out and make it modular, right? Um, so we've got the same codes, um, and we've got only now we, we uh, have seven, which is zero. Um, so now we're making it actually dependent on itself. Um, so in the case of zero, we're going to have a code. One, we're going to have a code. Two, we're going to have a code. Three, we're going to have a code. Four, we're going to have a code. When it gets to seven, it's going to turn init to zero. So initiate will go to zero, and when we get back to that if loop or that if statement, initiate is going to be zero, and it's not going to run again. Um, now, like I said, we could we could instead of tying it like this, we could tie it to um, to a button or something like that. But it's in, it's important for this case, especially for the the LCD, and the reason that we call this init is because we have to initiate the L, the LCD, right? So we're going to have this one code that only runs one time. And that's when we turn it on. When we turn it on, we initiate that LCD, um, and it'll it'll get it prepped to start taking codes from us, uh, and then it'll stop, and it won't ever run again. And that's literally what this code is used for here. We initiate, um, so we begin, and we, we put in all these codes, so it'll, it'll count to um, 25 is a 1, and everything is a 0, or everything is a 0, sorry, 25 through 27 is 0. Um, that'll put in this first code. If, when it's a one, it'll put in the second code, third code, fourth code, fifth code, and then it'll say initiate go to zero. So then we'll never see that again until we restart the device. Um, and then it, in that, you know, if there was an error, and that's why I said earlier, it's it's so important to put in a default case um, because, as you know, with electrons, every once in a while they just do weird stuff. So if if there's ever a case where this code is not, and, and especially in these other cases, right, where we're talking about five, six, and seven, where the code is not zero through four or seven, we'll just throw zeros out. Uh, and then we tie this uh, ultimately to our LCD, um, but in this case, we've got it tied to our LEDs. So we'll see kind of what that looks like. It's just gonna run through and flash these codes, as it were, 
and then it just goes zero. Uh, and that's and that's what we wanted it to do. So next, uh, we write to the LCD's memory with the code. So the first thing we had to do was initiate it. We still got that in here. And this is kind of the, the full set on block. And like I say, I'll upload a lot of this code, um, but you're going to have to change it. You may have to change it to what you're, what you're working with. Um, look at your specs and, and to deal with it that way. But for this, um, this is the code that we ultimately use for this LCD. There's a bit of a wrapper around it um, and there's a little bit outside, but you can look at the code for that later. So we have to initiate it and then we can start throwing it codes. Um, so here's what we do. We come in from the top. We still open the module as we did previously. I just wanted to not, I wanted to kind of break into this so we can all see it. Um, so we're going to start with that always loop. And so this is the case where we're changing registers, right? So we come in at the positive exit clock. We're always going to change count. We will never change. We're always changing count. Count will always change. It's not inside of an if loop. It's not inside of a case statement. There's nothing contingent. It will always change count. Uh, then we start out an if statement and we say is the button now remember there's reverse logic on there so if the button is is not pressed or if the button is pressed we're going to look and we're going to initiate so instead of just when i turn the lcd on now i want to initialize it whenever i hit the button so say i want to reset say something happened uh someone out codes to it and then it got jumbled up i'm not sure what's going on which actually happened and we, we had or i had some meta stability things that i had to work with um but Dealt, we can deal with that in a different video if you'd like. Um, so I just I made a I made it so that I could reset the initialization with a button. So I tied this init to a button, right? So if I push that button, init is one, um, and count will go down to zero, right? So init will be one, count will go down to zero, and we'll start that count again. Uh, init will stay one until something happens, right? Because we haven't told it to do anything else. It's just one, so it'll stay one. Um, now. We'll end that. Now we're going to say else. So if the button is pushed, let's reinitialize. So if the button is pressed, we're going to we're going to set that initialize bit. Then if it's not pressed, we're going to look at that bit. That's where this if else if. So if the button is pressed or the if I knit is one, if the button was pressed, then we're going to go through and do this case 25 down to 20. We're going to go through these codes. And basically what we're doing is initializing that screen. And these are where I think the actual codes that initialized it. So first we return the cursor to home. We, uh, we go into entry mode or we set the entry mode. Uh, we turn dips on, we set the data to eight bits with this LCD. You can do eight bit, four bit, one bit, I think. And that was kind of what I was talking about earlier about you may want to drive it a different way. I think ultimately I wind up driving it four bit. Uh, I still think that that's a bit, um, it's a bit too too loose. Uh, obviously, you, you want to kind of drive something like this with serial, so it should be one bit. Uh, you can crank up the clock speed a little bit and just you know run to that run that code to the uh, to the LCD. So, anyways, so we set it to eight bit mode, and then we clear the LCD display, uh, and then we stop the init, the init right, and then we allow a refresh. So we stop initiating. Uh, so we turn that init to zero, and then we set this new register that we've got refresh. We set that to one. Uh, and then we have a default code just in case, uh, you know, there's an error or if, if the code is something other than um, what was happening, we're going to send a 10 bit hex 100. Uh, so that, that was actually just a part of the, uh, if you go look at the data, data sheet, which we can look at here in a little bit, um, then there was just a reason to have that default code in there. Uh, and then you're going to end that case. Now from that case, we're going to do uh, for from the the first if right. So we had if else. So if button was was pressed, then we're going to go into that first spot. If the button wasn't pressed but initiate is one, we're going to go into the second spot. If the button wasn't pressed and initiate wasn't one, now we're going to say if refresh equals one. So if we just finished that initialization, now we're going into refresh right because we set refresh to one. So now refresh is one. We begin and we have this case 25 down to 20. And there's a reason it's 25 down to 20. That, sp that fits a specific timing that is allowed by the LCD, right? So 25 down to 20, it's going to read through those codes and it's going to display a three, 
it'll move to the next spot, display a one, move to the next spot, display a three, move to the next spot, display a seven, move to the next spot, display a three. And then we turn refresh to zero, which stops that code, right? So when we come back through, if the button hasn't been pressed, um, then it won't enter, right? So if the button hasn't been pressed, then we'll go to the next statement. Initiate isn't one because we've already turned it back to zero. We'll go to the next statement. Refresh is zero because we just changed it to zero and we, we drop out. So we're just kind of waiting for a refresh. And so this is just a, a simple case. Let's display 31373 to the, uh, to the LCD and then stop. And then if we want to do it again, we'll hit a refresh. Um, and to see the order of all that, um, it's not too bad. It's actually in the video that I played, but when you set this up, you'll, you'll kind of get the, the idea of all of it. So that was the code on how to do this, this uh, LCD display uh, from an FPGA. There's so much more that goes into it uh, in depth wise. Um, I may just decide if I find a, a piece in those videos that I like, I may decide to go ahead and, and, and upload a new video. But if you guys actually have something that you want to see that I didn't go into, or maybe something that I was wrong on, because Lord knows I'm wrong on things all the time, or sometimes I make just a blip and don't say things right or whatever, uh, let me know down below and uh, and we'll deal with it. I'll, I'll maybe set up a video for you. I'm also thinking about putting up a blog site that has my actual reports on it so you can go through and read through the report. Um, if it's something you're interested in, comment below. It'll put some pressure on me to get it done. Uh, otherwise, I'll just keep doing uh, everything that I can, real full life, you know. Um, but this may be a good time to do that. Uh, so anyways, we've got the FPGA programming the LCD screen. Um, how did we wire all that up, right? So that's kind of what this is. Um, I apologize for the diagram. Not the greatest, you know, it's, it's a little bit hard to read, but it's still, I think, doable. Anywhere where there was an actual tie-in to a new line, I tried to put a dot so that all those places where the lines are crossing, you know that they're they're not connected together. It's just uh, it's just somewhere where I had to run a line because I had to get across those lines. Um, so across that whole sp space there between uh, P12 RS and P90 um, across the LED, where there's lines crossing each other, there's no dot, so they're not connected. Uh, but it's a pretty simple setup, really. Um, I used the the li the lines the lines that I was talking about previously, which I'll link below, just some connection lines to connect up uh, P12 to RS, P15 to RW, or read-write, um, P07 to enable, then P22, P24, P27, P30, P33, P35, P41, and P51. Um, I made those data bits 0 through data bit 7. Uh, now there's an actual, if you go through and look at the Mojo FPGA, um, netlist, there's a reason why these are skipping so much. Um, and, and some of it was just because I wanted to, to wire out in a, in a fashion where I didn't, wasn't spinning too many lines together and wasn't, uh, I tried to get it all lined up so that it all looked even. So when I'm going through and visually inspection, inspecting the hardware, I can see, yes, these are definitely connected or this one looks like it might be loose. It's, it's just good for troubleshooting if you try to keep everything, uh, in order from a physical perspective. That doesn't mean it's in order from the FPGA. So when you're looking at the actual board header, these may be in order, right? Um, it just depends on how all that's hooked up. Uh, but like I said, I'll, I'll put that link in below, and we can also look at the data sheet for the LCD here in a second. Uh, and then we just have the, I guess the most interesting part actually, uh, P90 and uh, LED negative, LED positive, and then the, the VNOT, VDD, VSS. So uh, with LED negative, I'm just tying that to ground, right? With LED positive, I'm tying that up to the five volts, uh, the same five volt that uh, is on the Mojo V3. And then um, with V0, I'm tying that to the center swipe of a potentiometer. Um, and I've actually got a video that covers some potentiometer stuff. Um, it's under the current sensor video, um, but I may make a potentiometer video since this comes up quite a bit and this is kind of a, a new a new user sort of thing. Um, so it, it basically goes to the center pin of a potentiometer. One of those pins on the potentiometer, say the top pin is tied to VDD um, or in this yeah in this case VDD is off is coming from the LCD uh, display board 
and then the uh, the bottom of the potentiometer is tied to ground, which is also tied to VSS. Um, so V naught is tied to that that center sweep pin. It allows to change the voltage on V naught from zero up to uh, VDD, and that that allows to change the brightness on the screen. Um, otherwise, we have a button tied into P90, and this concept earlier we were talking about with pull up resistors. We've got one of those there. We're pulling up P90 to VSS, um, and that's where our button is uh, is is pulled up to. It's basically the same kind of uh, setup that we had previously. In fact, I think it's the exact same button. It's just pulled up to VSS. That uh, that finishes off these slides and uh, video four. Um, stay tuned for the video that uh, covers the code that is down in GitHub, uh, and also the video that covers the data sheets for the LCD and the Mojo. Um, thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Don't forget to love well.